Welcome to this Car Gurus UK review, where today I'm going to begin by saying how nice it is in this world of seemingly endless SUVs and crossovers to get to review the good old fashioned Super Mini. Except this one is not old fashioned, it's the brand new Renault Clio. Or at least, I think it is. Fair to say that Renault hasn't done anything too drastic with the design of this new Clio, which to the untrained eye looks more like a mild facelift of the old fourth generation model. Rest assured that it is all new though, from the platform to the engines and the interior and so on. So presumably what Renault is doing is working from the school of thought that says if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you know, to be fair, this is still a well-proportioned, good-looking little car. And as well as this car's Valencia orange paintwork, you can add different colour packs and bits and pieces to help make your Clio stand out from the crowd. Now it's here inside where the real changes have happened. Well, mostly that's in the front. We'll do that in a minute. First, I just want to have a quick look at space in the back or perhaps rather the lack of space in the back. Now Renault says that although the new Clio is slightly shorter than the old one, that it's carved out more interior space. But if there is more, it's marginal. My knees are still pretty much wedged into the driver's seat, which is set for me. I'm five foot 11. My feet are tucked under here and this gap to get in and out is quite narrow. Um, and I'm not sure it's going to be that comfortable for getting three people across either. It's not terrible, it's still a super mini, but there are roomier options in the class. Let's see, can't even get out. <laughs> Help! Where Renault has excelled is in the volume of the boot, which is right up there with the best in class. With such a high loading lip, we would though recommend getting the optional adjustable height boot floor. So what about the interior in the front then? Well, it's probably worth saying to start with that even the outgoing Clio had a nice interior. It looked different and it felt pretty high quality. So it's all credit to Renault that is upped its game once again. And this car, it's only one up from the bottom of the range. It's called an iconic spec car, but there's nothing that feels low spec about it. Now, admittedly, you don't get the digital dials and the larger portrait mounted touchscreen you can get in the top spec Clios, but actually, I really like these analog dials. They have a font that is reminiscent of older Clios and also they're angled away from you slightly, just like in older Clios. So they've kind of got that DNA, but they also have a full color trip computer in the middle to bring things up to date. The material choice is generally very well thought out. Almost everything that you touch, even if it doesn't look soft touch, it is, it's nice and sort of squidgy to the touch. It feels high quality. Also these toggle switches, they work perfectly well, as do these separate heater controls down here. And although, like I say, we've only got the smaller touchscreen here, this is a seven inch unit, it's absolutely fine. It's big enough to include all the information you need to see, it responds well, and it comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. A variety of power and audio input sockets, plus a decent amount of in-car storage, some of which is optional, such as this car's armrest, all add to the Clio's appeal. It's good how Renault has raised this gear lever up, so it's nice and close to the steering, which feels very natural. And of course, there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel itself and in the seat, you can get nice and low. My only slight gripe is that the space to the left of the clutch pedal to get down to the footrest is a little bit tight. So if you've got wide feet, you're going to want to watch out for that. I'll admit now that the first time I drove this nuclear, I wasn't overly impressed. I think in part it was dark, so I couldn't appreciate this new interior as much as when it's light, but also it was very cold. And when this one litre three cylinder engine that's in this particular Clio is cold, it can be a little bit rough. However, since then, I've done a lot of miles in this car. And as soon as the engine has got some temperature in it, it is much better, it's much smoother. I still don't think it's quite as refined as the units you'll find in a Volkswagen Group car, the one litre three cylinder, or Ford's one litre three cylinder EcoBoost. However, it's completely fit for purpose, it's fine. You can have the Clio with a one litre engine without a turbocharger, in which case you get 75 horsepower, or with a one litre engine with a turbocharger to give 100 horsepower. This car has the turbo motor in it. We've got a turbocharger on our side. In practice, you don't really feel the benefits of it until almost 3000 RPM. That's when the engine starts to really start to pull in a more meaningful way. I do think as well, if they could have fitted a six speed gearbox rather than the five speed one that we've got and had slightly shorter ratios, it just would have made the car feel a bit zippier. It's not 
a bad car. It's actually really quite nice to drive. I just think it could be a little bit better with a six-speed gearbox. Other engine options include 130 horsepower 1.2 turbo petrol, which comes exclusively with an automatic gearbox, and Renault's 85 horsepower 1.5 litre diesel. Perhaps the most interesting Clio will be the hybrid version, which arrives in 2020. Now, that car, Renault says, will be able to do about 80% of urban driving with zero tailpipe emissions. Until it comes along, I think that this one litre turbo petrol is probably the sweet spot in the range. It does what you need it to do. 0-62 in 11.8 seconds, so it's not hugely fast, but it's perfectly adequate. As far as the handling goes, the Clio doesn't do enough to dethrone the Ford Fiesta, but it is certainly pretty good. First things first, it feels like a tight car. This is not a baggy driving experience. Everything feels pretty well honed. It rides really nicely, actually. Uh, it's very impressive in that regard. And while it's not like a sporty car to drive, what's most impressive, I think, is how grown up it feels. You combine the cabin with the ride, the fact the engine's quite quiet. It's as good on the motorway as it is in town, and that's really good for a super mini. And also, you can see that Renault's thought about all the key contact points, like the gear lever and the leather on the steering wheel. It just makes the Clio feel like a nice place to be. Renault has kept the pricing for this new Clio very keen. The range kicks off at just over £14,000, and this iconic spec car with the turbo engine comes in at around £16,300. Do you know the Clio, which is now coming up to 30 years old, is the best-selling French car of all time, with more than 15 million sold. And with this new model being as good as it is, it looks like that success story is set to continue. Right, that is it for this CarGurus UK review. If you've enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, when it comes to finding your next car, you can easily find great deals from top-rated dealers at cargurus.co.uk.